Hi, Elaine here. Today I'll be showing you how to work wonders with watermarks by making magic with Master Pages in Affinity Publisher. What are Master Pages? Well, Master Pages in Affinity Publisher act as templates. They allow you to establish a consistent layout across multiple pages in a document. Master Pages are the perfect place for repeating elements, including headers, footers and backgrounds. Those elements automatically apply to all the pages that the master page is associated with. Master pages are great for streamlining the design process and ensuring a cohesive look throughout your publication. Changes made to master pages automatically apply to all the pages the master page is applied to. So you get fast updates to your layouts. A little bit more about master pages. You're not limited to a single master page in your file. You can add as many as you need. You can apply more than one master page to a standard content page. You can even apply a master page to another master page. That is nested master pages. How do you apply master pages? You have a few options. Drag and drop is probably the fastest method. You click and hold on the thumbnail of the master page and you drag it over the page or pages you want it applied to. If you want more control though, you can right click a page and select Apply Master. That will then show you a dialog box with a few extra options. But today we are talking about watermarks. What are watermarks? Well, watermarks in a document are a distinguishing mark. They could be images, they indicate authenticity of the document, ownership of the document, or information about the document. Where should your watermarks go in Affinity Publisher? You can place a watermark on a single page. You can place it on multiple pages. What you actually do is going to depend on your specific needs. I'll be demonstrating watermarks on master pages. That is the most efficient location because watermarks are easier to apply via master pages. They're easier to change or edit if they're on a master page. And while we're talking about adding watermarks, having them on master pages also makes them easier to remove. So let's take a look at our first demonstration file, which is Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, one of my favourite books. The aim here is to add the word draft to the master page as a watermark. The current version of this file needs some work to be as good as it could be. At the moment, there are two master pages in this file. One is called blank. The other has page numbers on it. And that is the first problem. Both of those master pages have a shape providing the background colour. Why is that a problem? Well, if you decided to change the background colour, you would need to change it in two places. Unless, of course, it's formatted with a global colour. Now, for demonstration purposes here, it isn't. Changing the colour on one master page doesn't automatically apply it to the other page. With the file in its current state, if we want to add a watermark, we would need to add it to both master pages. That is because some pages have the blank master applied and other pages, those with page numbers, have the page numbers master applied. I have a watermark ready in another file, copying that back to the file we're working on, navigating to the blank master page and pasting in that watermark. I will put it on both sides of that master. Then we'll have a look what that has managed to do. Looking at the content pages, where there is no page numbers, we have a watermark. But where the master applied is the page number, we have no watermark. Easy solution, navigate to the page numbers master page and paste the watermark in. Then navigating back and all of the pages with page numbers have a watermark. We can do way better than that in terms of organisation. What I'm going to do is go back and delete all of the extra watermarks that we are not going to need and show you at this stage as well, the colour of the background page is coming from a shape on the master page. And that is on both of the master pages we currently have. Changing the colour of that shape only changes the page background colour where that specific master page is applied, which is something we can also fix with nested master pages. At the moment, we do not have any of those, but what I'm going to do is delete the shape providing the background colour from the page numbers master page. I still have a shape 
providing the colour on the blank master. This would actually be much better named if I renamed it to base, meaning it's containing all of the base elements. Now to take the colour from what is now the base master page and have it applied to the page numbers master page is really straightforward. Right click on the page numbers master page, click apply master. At the moment there are no masters applied, click the drop down and choose base. Now we have one single shape coming from a single master page providing the background colour for all of the pages in the file. We now need to consider the watermark. I'm going to create another master page. This one is going to contain the watermark. The watermark is still on the clipboard, so I'm going to paste it in. I am not at this stage going to place a second copy on the right hand side. Before I do that, I'm going to use Studio Link to access the Affinity Designer tools. And I'm going to make a symbol from that watermark. In the Symbols panel, with it selected, click Create and then return to the publisher persona. Now I will recopy that and paste it and move it into position on the right hand side. At this stage, the watermark is not applying to any pages at all. What we would need to consider in our master pages is what page would we need to apply our status master page to for that to work. So we can visualize this. I'm going to move the status master page up to the top of the stack. That is actually the order they need to be applied in. So the status master page would be applied to the base master page. Right click on there, choose apply master. From the drop down, select status and OK. You could be forgiven for thinking at this stage, but Elaine, it didn't work. It did. But when you apply the content of a master page to another page, be that a master page or a content page, it puts it behind the existing content. If I toggle off the shape providing the background colour, you can see it has actually applied the contents of that master page to this page. But we need the watermark on top of the shape providing the background colour. That is really simple. Because this is a master page, I can click on the watermark layer and drag it above the shape providing the background colour. And problem solved. The status master page is applied to the base master page. I have forced the contents of the status master page to the top of the layer stack showing over the background colour shape. And all of that is acting as a background to the page numbers master page. And in that circumstance, that is all there is to it. Opening up the pages panel again, we don't need to see the master pages anymore. And having a look at what we've actually got now, irrespective of whether we have the base master applied with no direct content or the page numbers master applied with the page numbers, we also have the watermark applying. This is a work in progress of a file where the content is much denser. Every page is covered with content. Having a watermark behind the content would be futile. Which doesn't mean you can't make it work, it just means you have to know how to make it work. But first, the problem, before I share the solution. Again, I have a copy of a watermark, so selecting that, copying, moving back to the file that I need it in, and I'm going to create a status master page. I'll paste the watermark in. Again, I'm going to use Studio Link to go to Designer, with it selected, Symbols panel and create a symbol and then back to Affinity Publisher. Then copy that symbol and paste it onto the other page. The blank master is already applied to all of those pages. I am going to rename that to base, right click, select apply master and this time I want the status master page applied to the base master page. And that just gives us flexibility down the line. Now, I said that the base master page was already applied to all of the pages. So let's go and have a look at some of those pages. I see no status. I see no watermark, not on any of them. The reason for that is because of all the content on each of these pages obscuring it. But if we look in the layers, you can see down at the bottom, we do have the base master applied. And in the thumbnail, we can actually see the watermark. To make sure it's there, I'm going to select all my content 
and toggle off the content and you can see that that watermark is there. It might as well not be because the content is obscuring it. But this is how we fix that. The solution is not the same as it was in the first example. Because apart from a handful of images, each page in A Christmas Carol had predictable content. And you could see the master page content in the background through the content on each page. And that is not so here. The first issue is the entire master page is covered with content on each page. The second issue is that each page has a different number of elements in the layers panel. And that makes it tricky to deliberately place the watermark where it would be seen. Select the master page in the layer stack, right click and select edit linked. That takes us into a different mode. We now have a green stripe across the top indicating that we're editing the base linked master page. At this stage, I need to go to layer, arrange and move to front, which promotes the master page to be the top level content on this page. Then click finished and go and check the other pages. Because if we look at our thumbnail, it would appear it has only applied to this page. It does sometimes take a little while for the thumbnails to update, but you can see our cover has draft on it. The Great Adventure has draft on both sides. And so do all of our other pages. Couple of extra bonus things here. First, editing the watermark. You could add additional master pages, but you could also edit a single master page containing your watermark. Now we know that ours is on status, so navigating to the status master page, and instead of the word draft, I'm going to change that to proof. Notice both instances of that changed, and that is because we took the time and we made a symbol using the tool set in Affinity Designer. The other thing you may want to do is remove the watermark when you're at final production. Again, you can do that from the status master page and literally just toggle off the view. You may notice I didn't even have to toggle off the view of both of them because they're a symbol. And whether you can see them or not is part of the definition of the symbol. Let's have a quick recap. For fiction documents or content like files, I added a master page called status and then added the watermark to that page. I converted the watermark to a symbol and then got clever with nested master pages. I applied the status master page to the base master page and applied the base master page to the page numbers master page. Now in more content dense documents, Content on the master page is placed behind a varying number of other elements on the content pages. Because of that, we need a different approach to moving the watermark to the correct location. Navigate to a standard content page and locate the watermark in the layers panel. Right click on the status layer and select edit linked. From the menu, you need to choose layer, arrange, move to front. You must use the menu command rather than dragging and dropping that layer manually. Then click finish when you've moved the watermark to the top of the layer stack. Repeat as required as you add content. If you want new tutorials and tips and tricks on a regular basis, check out my free training at elainegiles.com VIP. Hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss future tutorials. And if you have any requests for specific tutorials, be sure to contact me. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and see you next time.